We are I. Good morning, everybody. 4.44 a.m. And it could be midnight by the looks of it outside. Fun fact. I use Q-tips. Most people use Q-tips. But did you know that Q-tips used to be called baby gays? Hmm. I find this interesting because of how controversial that would be these days. Then when did they change the name and why did they change the name? And I look at this as, you know, in today's, you know, relative world, how we have a bread company called Bimbo. Like, how does that still exist? Bimbo bread. Interesting. I don't know. Fun little facts that my brain was thinking about. Um, what I do want to express today is how you choose to live your life. Because this is on the precipice of, you know, me going on an epic uh, weekend adventure with a group of people that um, are close to me for multiple different reasons. Like everybody who's going is very close to me um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't, I don't like the wild cards. I don't like the people who, you know, could be like a mystery because, you know, like our, our time is so valuable. And I talk about this all the time, like how we choose to be able to spend our time. You know, when I go do great shit, when I do go do great things, when I add memories into my bank, my archive that I know will delete other files because my brain just doesn't have the capacity to be able to hold it all. When I'm doing that, I don't want the wild card there that can wreck it all. I want peace. I want easy. I just want the freedom. That's why I choose to do so many things alone. It's because I just, I I know, and it's not in this rigid ideology. It's just, you know, I've realized that a lot of people, you know, make a big deal about dumb shit. So this weekend, sorry, this weekend, I'm like, hey, got another one of these big drives, about seven hours total. Got to get up and go work out. 350, because I need the extra time. Need the extra time, not only because I want to get on the road by eight, <clears throat> but I also want to make sure that I have the time in the morning to get what I need to get done to be able to make sure that this drive is the best for me mentally and emotionally and physically so that I can sift through all the files in my mind and my heart that I need to and not just have the chatter. So that's how I start it. I got to make sure that I I make it a priority no matter how early I have to get up, no matter how long the drive is, no matter what time I potentially may be going to bed, no matter how tired I might be the rest of the weekend as a result. But I have to make it a priority because I know how healthy it makes me feel. Plus, I'm just coming off a big stint of two weeks of a disrupted morning routine. And I'm hungry, hungry to get it back into my life. So I'm going to start with that, the, the prioritization of the things that make me whole. Then we leave at eight. Like there's four carloads of people going, you know, two of those carloads are leaving at eight. <clears throat> one of them maybe between eight and nine, the other one at between two and four in the afternoon. Everybody leaving in the morning, we're going to meet in a Soyuz at my friend's coffee shop, Junction 3 Coffee shout out. In the Soyuz, oh my gosh, best coffee on the planet. Love them, great people, great atmosphere, great place. Um, Junction 3 Coffee, it's the place to go. Meeting there at noon. No matter how you get there, just get there. We'll have a coffee, sit down. That's the start. The organization, the planning, that this is what we're going to do. It's just, that's the idea, formulating in the mind. The start is the adventure. Once you get in the car and you start that drive, you know the first leg of that adventure is getting to a Soyuz and meeting at that coffee shop, sitting down on the outdoor patio in the front, watching other people walk by until the people that are familiar faces to you start to show up. 
break a little bread, drink a little coffee, continue on because there's still another three hours of a journey, three and a half hours of a journey after that to get to your destination. But arguably that three, three and a half hours is going to be some of the most beautiful driving, especially on a day like today <clears throat> where it's supposed to be like 33, 34 degrees just crisp. The scenery will be so crisp and so fake looking. It'll just look like a constant rollout of a postcard that just never ends. You know, then you get up to Nelson, BC. And through all the research that you've done, all the pictures you've looked at, who knew that Nelson, BC had white sand beaches? Man, I didn't. But now I do know. And Pretty soon, I'm going to dig my toes into it, and the thought will come across my mind that I want to complain about how hot that sand is and where my flip-flops are. What a great problem to have. Skip so to Nelson, BC, and you know, through all the research that you've done and the planning that you've done, you've come across this little boutique hotel that this husband and wife and this family you know, decided to pack up from down here on the coast and say, fuck it, we need a change in our lives and they go buy a little hotel and they renovated it and it's all sweets now which is very key to me to have a kitchen to be able to cook from and you know food in the fridge and just knowing that i don't have to go out and spend money on a meal that i'm not going to be satisfied with that i can make a meal at home i can make a meal that is going to fill up my belly and feel good that i've ate it financially you know nutritionally the whole bit Staying at this beautiful little hotel with this beautiful courtyard and how she booked off Marika at Sterling All Suites. Shout out to Sterling All Suites and especially Marika, you're awesome. Sitting in the little courtyard that she's blocked off because we've taken the entire ground floor of this hotel. So all of our suites go out into this courtyard and now we have solo access to this asking me if we want tables and chairs brought out and put into this courtyard so that we can all hang out and eat together and have fun together. This is this is our weekend. This is a weekend of building memories and furthering relationships. So we'll get there on Friday night and relax and get things set up because on Saturday morning, I put out to the group, you know, whoever wants to come, no pressure, but I'm going for a hike. Two, three hours max, nothing crazy, going for a hike. Who wants to come? Well, that's a game time decision on Saturday morning. Maybe that's a good idea. Now, maybe you wake up on Saturday morning. It's not. But I have to fill my eyes. I have to fill my heart. I have to fill my soul with seeing some new things, and I'm going to do that. So get back from that hike and have a little something to eat and relax. Hopefully be back around 11 because we have to be in the Slocan Valley, which is about 15, 20 minutes away, around 1230. You have to make sure that you pack your floaty though, because we're going to go floating down the river as well. Floaties in, air compressors in, get them in the cars, get the people in the cars, get the GoPros, get the cameras, get the water bags, get it all. We got to get in the car. Grab your drinks, grab your fun, grab your stuff. Let's do this. Get in the car as you drive down to the Slocan Valley. He said 15, 20 minutes. Get set up. Go to Endless Adventures. Shout out to Chris at Endless Adventures. Great guy. Been doing this rafting thing for a long time. Got a great small crew. Awesome company. Blow up all the floaties beforehand so that when we get back from rafting and kayaking, their floaties are ready to go. Go through a little safety course. All the people are going to disperse whether or not who's going to be in the raft and who's going to be IKing independent kayak. I know for me, because that danger level is a little bit higher, getting to go through those rapids all on your own, I'm going to dig it. Go pro on, let's go. Going through those whitewater rapids, risk of flipping, hitting rocks, let's hit it hard. I'll take that line. I'll risk it all. Let's do this. I got a life jacket on. I got a helmet on. No problem. A little bit more, a little bit more risk, a little bit more fun. Tolerance for excitement is really high. Looking back at that boat, I can already see it, that raft, seeing that crew of people floating down that river, hooting and hollering, having fun, paddling hard while I'm doing the same. Can't wait. 
get through the hour and a half of just that excitement and that joy. And we get to all grab our floaties, hop back on that river and just float down with ease and relax. Grab a couple of drinks, have a few laughs, bake in the sun because it's supposed to be 36 to 38 degrees. Pack up, get all the floaties packed up, head back to Nelson, get cleaned up. Have all the stuff ready because we're having Mexican taco night on the beach. Bringing a a little portable stove down, Coleman stove, propane tank. Have all the fixings. Everybody's got everything all set up already. We're going to go down to the beach. We're going to post up. We're going to have, you know, 12 people down on the beach having fun, kicking back a few cervezas. Making some tacos on the beach, having fun, laughing, baking in the sun, having a good time, looking out at the lake, getting too hot, going to hop in the lake and cool down a little bit, come back to relax. Great time. Great time. One of my friends, she's her 39th birthday, her and a crew, her friends are going up to Nelson. There's like 15, 20 people going out for the night. If we want to hook up with them, we can hook up with them and we can go out and we can build some more memories and meet some new awesome people that we haven't met before. If they don't turn out to be awesome, great, because we can leave them there and head back home. Get back to the hotel, get a good sleep in, because you know what? On Sunday morning, we got another hike planned, going to see more things that the eyes and the soul have not seen yet. Rivers, views, mountaintops, trails, wildlife, experiencing those things together, solidifying that bond between everybody, filling that wanderlust in that adventurous soul. Because on Sunday afternoon, we all have to pack up and do that six, seven hour drive back home. And every second is sitting in that car. It's going to be absolutely worth it because then you can go back on and you can tell those stories for the rest of your life, how epic that weekend was. And you can fill in the gaps of all the stories, which will be this podcast on Monday. Actually being able to describe all those experiences and how they actually happened and how they took place and how they formulated and the great time that we all had. So the whole concept of today's podcast is really just the fundamentals of how do you choose to live your life? How do you choose? You have choices to make. Me, I choose the stories every time. 